Facebook and YouTube, and we will be live on Instagram in just a minute. So guys, come on board. If you are watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. Comment replay and give me a shout out. Give my guest tonight a shout out as well. I've got Lou and Brian here on loan to me from Click Medical. So thank you to Click Medical tonight for sponsoring this show. And going live on Instagram. All right. So we're live on all three. We're going to give you guys a minute or two to jump on board and get this show started tonight. So guys, thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. My pleasure. So we'll we'll start them off right. We got we got something to cheers, right? Everybody's got a mug. <laughs> yeah. They got my mug. Yeah, everybody yeah. got their click button swag. Woo. All right. There cheers, guys. All right, guys. I see a couple of you guys popping on board this evening. You know the routine. Don't be shy. Let me know who you are, where you're from, and what is in your mug this evening. Uh, speaking of mugs, we're going to be giving away a couple of these Yeti Click Medical mugs. They're always a hot item here on the show. We got Beth coming in from Georgia. Georgia, you're all over the place, Beth. Last time you were in Florida last week, and now you're in Georgia. All right, let's see who else we got coming on board. We're going to give you guys another minute or so. Tonight's show, guys, I won't lie, it makes me a little nervous, and that's why I brought some experts tonight, because I've never done a show on anything insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That is not my wheelhouse, but I think that was all the more reason why we needed to do a show because I know even Brian commented tonight, nobody is an expert <laughs> on insurance and how it works. Uh, let's see, we got Pastor David, it's a party, he's in the house. Uh, Beth, you're traveling home. We've got my Tar Heel there, Denise from North Carolina. All right, a lot of people are starting to pop on board. All right, let's see who else we got on Instagram. We got Vero jumping on board, someone by the name of Grande Rojo and Pam is on board as well. Thank you guys for joining me. All right, we got Dean coming in from Miami. And Ed, oh, there's my physical therapist colleague right there from Johns Hopkins. Ed living in Baltimore, enjoying his kefir. Nice, he's, welcome. He's, he's fancy tonight. All right, guys, we got Emily. Hey, Emily from Pennsylvania. Got back from my first in-person amputee support group. Congratulations, Emily, and I'm glad to have you. I know you haven't been able to make it the past few Wednesdays, so I'm glad you are back tonight. All right, guys, we've got a nice group on board. So we're going to go ahead and get this evening started. We got Teresa coming in from Albuquerque as well. Thank you for joining in, Teresa. All right, guys. So for those of you watching the show for the first time, welcome. My name is Cosi Bayoso. I'm a physical therapist, amputee specialist here in Tampa, Florida. I've been a PT for over 23 years, and my passion is working with the limb loss community. And today I've got Lou Figueroa right there, and we got this way. Brian Simmons <laughs> from Click Medical. So they are going to be telling their stories uh, and we're going to be talking about the insurance code and how that system works in our U.S.-based healthcare insurance system and all that kind of fun stuff. We got Linda coming in from New York and Bonnie from Tennessee. There you go. All right, guys. So let's just do a quick start. Actually, Brian, I'm going to stop talking for a minute. I want you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Great. Happy to do it. Hello, everyone. Uh, Brian Simmons. I am with Click Medical. After spending about 30 years in uh, business consulting, I had the pleasure and the blessing of meeting the Click team about four or five years ago. And, you know, I had been in healthcare consulting for a long time and had never heard of O&P. And uh, when I got to know Jimmy and the team and I got to know the good work that Click Medical was doing um, and just the passion to bring a solution that we all love and live with every day. We live with adjustability every day, our belts, our shoes, our seat belts, our, our seats. Um, when I, when I, when I saw what the team was doing and the products that were made available to friends like Lou, I, I just sort of jumped in and have had the joy of helping grow the company and chase this L code that we're going to talk about later. And uh, I lead business development for click. I go out and meet with perhaps any of you who are on the phone who are prosthetists in the area and uh, just work to build relationships, spread the good news of adjustability. And uh, yeah, and it's, a, and it's a joy and a pleasure to do it. Good to be here with you. Thank you. And thank you for bringing your expertise. And we're going to be hearing about Lou's story just a little bit later. You're going to have to stick around for that one, guys. Uh, before we get started, though, we're going to go ahead and announce our first giveaway winner. Y'all know I love to do my free giveaways on this show. So thank you to Click Medical. They're going to be sending you a Click Medical Yeti mug, just like the one that Lou has. So Lou, you got to do the right here. <laughs> I love it, by the way. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's a very, very nice mug, guys. Uh, so our first winner for this evening is Randall Archer. We had a pre-giveaway, so you had to nice. follow uh, Click Medical and Cozy Talks on Instagram or Facebook and like the post that we had already posted. But we also have two more giveaways coming up for those of you watching live, so stick around for that. We got Scott in stormy West Virginia running late, drinking Wendy's orange dreamsicle frosty in my cup. 
wow, that would sh send me into sugar shock. <laughs> We've got Kenny in Virginia Beach, who's just his water. Uh, and then Jamie coming in from Click, from Click Medical. So guys, if you have been living under a rock and you have never seen my show before and you've never watched any of my shows, then let me just introduce Click Medical. So Click Medical are the makers of the adjustable socket systems. Okay, their most popular one is called RevoFit. I've got all my toys here. So we're just gonna go do a brief overview. They have three main products, RevoFit, Revo Surface, and Revo Lock. So the RevoFit is providing adjustability into your socket. Now this is my demo socket, so it's got a lot of action going on. But as you can see, you can adjust a socket through a gap system, through a panel system. I've got all the dials here. And again, guys, this is the demo socket, so there's a lot of stuff, good stuff going on here. So there's a panel system, so you can adjust your socket this way as well. The Revo Lock is their suspension system, and it's all the way in at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. So we've got their suspension system. And then my personal favorite is the Revo Surface. Okay, so what I love about the Revo Surface is that those of you who already have a socket that fits pretty well and you don't wanna go make a new socket, you just need to have that adjustability built in, your prosthetist can build it in with a Revo Surface kit, right? So just so you can see the difference, this is the Revo Surface where you can see the strings on the outside versus the Revo Fit where it's built into the actual socket. They both provide the same adjustability. Guys, did I get all this right? Yeah, yeah. you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lou, which one do you use? Currently, I use the Revo Fit and it's on my BK. So my baloney amputation and I have the grip on it. So it's a little bit easier to turn. Uh, I really love mm -hmm. it. I've been using it since 2015. And then now they have, do you have the click reel or do you have the BOA dial? I have the click reel, the new one, the new version. Okay. So I love the click reel guys, cause you can adjust it. I call it forward and backward, but it's really to tighten and then to loosen it. You don't have to release the whole dial to get it to loosen. So you can really do some nice micro adjustments. Um, so this is wonderful. It can adjust up to, remind me on this one, it's about 10 ply. Yeah, yeah give or take, yep. Yep, give right. or take 10 ply. So, Love this. I have so many of you here. Quick cozy poll. How many of you here have a Revo Fit or Revo Surface or Revo Lock? Show of hands in the comment section. It takes about like a minute for people to like. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> you have one? We got Count one. Me in. There's like a little time delay. I'm just going to pop over to Instagram, make sure everything is cool there. All right. We got Jenner on board. We've got I love reading all the Instagram handles. It's always fun. Bubakar is watching. <laughs> While they're doing oh, that, I have the this, uh, this socket here that's with me. And we have a oh, couple dials here. One. So we have a dial here and here. And then we have another one okay. that's for the uh, V2 is what we call it. And that is um, a lanyard system. So um, you'd pull this dial out and then it's connected with this kind of locking liner. So that's you know, one of the other options, really kind of a cool design. You got your gap there too, and then your panels as well. So yeah, well. yeah. really Very cool. Nice. And guys, what I love about it is the the prosthetist can really customize where they put the adjustability on the socket and also where they put the dial. So it's really nice in that regard. All right, so Lou, your turn. Tell us My about turn. yourself. Yes. Well, I'm Lou Figueroa. I am a bilateral amputee. I have one above my knee and one below my knee. So I have a little bit of best of both worlds. And uh, my story is quite unique. We hear it often in the amputee world. Uh, you know, I had been out with a group of friends and was separated from them along the night. And uh, we weren't sure really what happened if I encountered like a drink that was laced with something or if I picked something up on accident. But in any event, I ended up... Um, walking out of the nightclub that I was at and wandering about almost two and a half miles into what would have been the Union Station rail yard. And I was completely unaware of my surroundings at this point. They think I was crawling underneath a train when it started to move and it severed both of my legs. And uh, really that train didn't know that, uh, that my body had been struck because I was somewhere in the middle of the train so it was the next train that came through that was like doing routine operations 
that actually came up on my body and they'd seen, you know, that I had been struck by the previous train that had came through. So, I mean, luckily, to my surprise, the conductor of the railway, he was trained in the military and he immediately went into survival mode and he put tourniquets around my legs and instructed the other conductor to run and grab an ambulance. Uh, I mean, people don't survive that type of injury, um, let alone the trauma is one thing, right? But then, you know, you're talking the loss of both limbs and my hand was severely um, crushed as well. So they had to amputate my hand. Uh, so that's really like the core story of what happened with me. You know, they, they rushed me to the hospital and I went through nine life-saving surgeries over the next week or so. And when I woke up, you know, my family had asked me, how did this happen? And I had a place to stay in the downtown district of Denver. I had a sober driver. Like I thought I took all the precautions one would take to have a fun night. And this still happened. And a lot of my friends were just like, man, they knew me as a mountain biker, a snowboarder, somebody like if it had two, two or four wheels on it, I was riding it pretty much. And a lot of my friends were like, wow, what's going to happen now? Like, how is he going to move forward? And I was in a wheelchair for about two years. And uh, during that time, I was doing a lot of research about prosthetics and, you know, a lot of the doctors, they had high hopes that I would walk again, but they're like, man, this is going to take him a long time. This is not going to just happen overnight. And uh, it was about two years later of me being in a wheelchair that I got my first set of prosthetics. And uh, back then it was 2010, somewhere around there. And so... They were like rigid sockets. They were made out of this hard plastic and there really was no room for adjustability. It was like you put it on, you threw on a couple sock plies and like throughout the day, what you'd have to do is you would shed those plies of socks off and you would add them accordingly if you gained weight. And so it was about 2015 when I had started using some of the adjustability and wow, what a difference it made in my life just all the trips I was taking back and forth to the prosthetist and, you know, some of the skin breakdown that I was having from the prosthetics not fitting correctly. I mean, the adjustability was just awesome to have. And so that's a brief kind of intro to who I am and how I started using the products. But, you know, I'm a I'm a everyday user now and I just love how we're able to make those what you called cozy micro adjustments throughout the day. Yeah. No, it's 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 really it really is that it's been a game changer for so many of my viewers and my patients, um, especially here in hot, sticky Florida. You know, volume limb volume changes so dramatically, and to have to take everything off and put it back on and take it, yeah. So it's it's been a game changer for a lot of folks here. Um, this yeah. is the first time I've heard your story, Lou. That's that's amazing, amazing. Yeah, kind of crazy. I mean, yeah, we hear about it all the time. People get separated from the group of friends and this is kind of like the severe case of it happening. But yeah, what, what a journey it's been and to help a lot of other amputees along the way. Um, I hear a lot of people on your show, by the way, that are like, they just are lost for answers and you're providing a service to them that is invaluable, Cozy. I'm just so thankful to be a part of this podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining. So we got Andrea says, forget what's in my cup. I'm ready for bed. Long day. She's my <laughs> occupational therapist. So she always chimes in to help me out with the occupational therapy <laughs> questions. Uh, Susan said that she's heard your story before, Lou. Uh, let's see. We got nice. Rita coming in from Michigan. We got Tom out there as well. Jerry Ann says, I don't have any, but I would love to get the Revo Fit. I'm a bilateral BK, not walking just yet. Tampa Dolphin Rod Rodney says, as a prosthetic technician, I built a socket with the Revo today. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Nice. Marianne says, Mary Ann, she says, at first I hated my Revo click reel, but come to find out mine had come loose. So Chad fixed it, her prosthetist, mm -hmm. and now she's very happy. And I know, Mary Ann, you are incredibly active as a bilateral AK. So I'm glad that you're using it. Uh, Sean coming in from Jacksonville. Can't wait for my appointment for Monday. And hopefully you can get your adjustable socket. Yes. Awesome. Nice. All right. So guys, if you've been watching the show, you know that when it comes to the questions on insurance, I don't really have answers a lot of the times. This is not something that I consider to be my forte at all. In my own private practice, it's a cash-based practice, so I don't work with insurance. I used to once upon a time, and I will admit I always struggled with it. 
Um, it is a very complicated system. There's a lot of rules and I feel like it's like Facebook and Instagram. They change the rules every five minutes. It feels like sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and just when you're getting the hang of it, right? So as a patient and knowing, you know, how this system works, you know, whatever information you can arm yourself with is just going to help you, especially for those of you who have had prosthetic componentry denied by your insurance companies. I'm sure if I took a poll, let's do another COSI poll. How many of you have ever had a prosthetic component denied or services, any kind of services denied by your insurance company? Um, Jerry Ann says, Lou, a lot of people have train accidents and you're amazing. Yes, agreed. Oh, thank, um, you. <laughs> thank you, Jill. So guys, let's talk. We're going to kind of give you the basic breakdown and I kind of organized it into like a funnel type organization because y'all know I like to keep things organized. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the head honcho. The head honcho in the United States healthcare system is called the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It's also known as CMS. The government loves their initials that make no sense. <laughs> okay. And guys, don't worry about taking notes. I will be providing a cheat sheet for you to download and you're just gonna have to watch my social media because I have all the information I'm talking about tonight. It's gonna be available to you next Monday. So all you gotta do is listen tonight, right? So we've got the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And that was an easy one, right? They are in charge of Medicare and Medicaid. They're also in charge of CHIP, which is the pediatric version of Medicaid, right? And they, they have their hands in a lot of things, right? They help control with HIPAA. They help regulate uh, standards for nursing homes. And among the many, many things that they do, they are the ones who created this lovely insurance coding system that we have. Okay. So that's the CMS, Central's Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So CMS created... It's called the Healthcare Common Procedural Coding System. And yes, that has more initials, HCPCS, right? We call it, I, I call it HICPIS. <laughs> that's, that's, that's I can, easiest way I can pronounce it, okay? So CMS created HICPIS, and that is the coding system that we use, okay? And it's organized into two different levels. It used to be three, but now we just use the two main levels, right? Level one, okay? It's called the CPT codes, common procedural terminology, right? And this is where all your medical, surgical, and diagnostic services are coded under the CPT codes. Um, this is what actually physical therapists, this is what we use when we do our coding, and it's all numeral codes. So for example, if I did a gate training, so if I was gate training my patient for 15 minutes, then I would use the code, I even wrote it down, 97116 right? That's the code that I would write down on my patient's bill and send it off to the insurance. And the insurance company would say, okay, she did gate training according to this code. We reimburse for this amount. And that's how it works, right? Level two codes, okay, are for basically everything else. So all the items, supplies that you may use, non-physician services, everything is covered in level two. And in level two, you have codes A through V. And this is where the L code falls in. How am I doing, guys? So far, so good? Fantastic. All right. Okay. So, guys, we're going to do I, repetition is the mother of memory. So I'm just going to kind of go over that again. At the tip top, we have Central for Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. They created HICPIS, the insurance coding system. We have level one and level two, right, for the coding systems. Level two is where the prosthetic action is. This is where your prosthetist will have their noses buried in this part of the manual <laughs> looking for everything. <laughs> okay. So I mentioned level two, they have codes A through V. You're right in the middle with L codes. So if you've ever heard your prosthetist use the term L code, this is what they're referring to. Okay. So this is where you're going to find all the prosthetic devices, right? So that's basically it. Did I miss anything, Brian? Well, I would I would add one or two things. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't miss anything, but the one thing I would add would be that it all starts with what CMS does for Medicare for the Medicare population, and then uh, and then all others. Let's say follow, but it doesn't mean they follow exactly. But they they sort of wait for Medicare to make a decision about something before they even put their toe in the put their toe in the water and decide if they're going to pay attention at all to that particular code. Yep. Um, so that's that's the that's the that's probably the most important thing that I kind of wanted to throw in there. 
And that's that's the that's the part I remember hearing about mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was in insurance based clinics was Medicare made a decision. That means the other private insurances are going to probably be keeping an eye and having some sort yeah. of reaction and to it. The, the VA follows very closely because kind of by law, they have to I think by law, they have to pretty much follow what Medicare does. The reimbursement rates could be different, but the right. coverage is going to be very similar. Medicare Advantage, of course, has their own sort of um, limitations and restrictions based on the commercial the commercial payer that has the Medicare Advantage plan mm -hmm. and then commercial insurers through employers and whatnot. They're going to they're going to do what they do. But but the point is, it all begins with what CMS decides to do. And then um, so when a, when a new code gets created or when CMS makes a decision, everyone pays attention because it means there's a cascading effect of what's going to happen next. And a new yeah. code means good things are going to happen. Yes. And guys, we're going to tell you a little bit more about why that should matter to you in just a second, but we're going to do our second giveaway <clears throat> this evening. My girl, Jamie, is going to post a link and it's going to take you to the Click Medical website specifically to Lou's story. So you're going to see his handsome <laughs> mug and, <laughs> on that website. And the giveaway question is, what are the two systems that Lou uses from Click Medical? And you got to put that into the comments section. There is a Yeti mug at stake for this, guys. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. So Jamie just posted that link for you. All you got to do is right click. Do not click out of the show. Um, Brandon's like, Brian is the man. You got a fan there. Brandon, <laughs> hey, buddy. How are you? All right. So guys, once again, for that giveaway, we got a lot of folks joining in on Instagram. Hello, Brad. All right. So for the giveaway, go to that link that Jamie just posted and let me know what are the two click medical systems that Lou uses. Yeah, you good luck. Uh, yeah. I could tell you as an amputee, like one of the codes I always heard and I was just like, ah, oh, frustrated me was L5999. It's like the L599 code was like. Yes, that's where everything, that. that's where prosthetic devices go to die. That's, that's the L599. So guys, if you've heard of the L5999 code, it's basically the junk code, the dump code, the I don't know what else to classify it as code. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever your prosthetist has a particular component that does not have its own specific L code, they assign it the L5999 code. Um, and a lot of times that means that insurance may go and deny it. Okay. Everybody, everybody hold that thought because Kosi, I want to talk about the importance yes. of the utilization of that code for new technology. We're going to bring that into the conversation later. It's a really important point that it has a, it has a reputation of being what you described and that causes people to not do what we as innovators need them to do to get new technology recognized. I can't wait to talk about that. Oh, good. Cause I don't know about that. So this yeah. is something I need to learn too. So Don says, great talk for us as people. Unfortunately, I'm in Canada, but I understand our system here and a good show signing off. Thank you, Don. Uh, so guys, the, the question ultimately is, well, why do we, when we're patients, why do we need to know about the coding system? And the best analogy I could think of is when you go to a restaurant, right? You go to a restaurant, you order a very nice meal and the waiter brings you the bill. What should you be doing? <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the bill, right? You should just do a quick check to make sure that, you know, the three drinks that you ordered are in fact the three drinks that you ordered, right? And check through everything. And sometimes in the in the restaurants, they might have their own coding system for what they're billing you for, but you can more or less figure out this matches up to what I ordered. And if it's something that you did not order, then you send it back and have them correct it and not be charged for it. Same thing with our prosthetic and our medical care services. We should all theoretically, when our insurance bills come in, we should be looking at these bills, okay? And we may not be coding experts ourselves, but at the very least, we should be able to more or less identify the services that we received and the components that we are using, okay? And guys, again, on this cheat sheet that I'll be putting out, I'm gonna give you the website directly to Medicare. So you can type in the codes and it'll tell you it's public, it's public, it's open to the public, right? And I've done this sometimes with my parents' uh, insurance bills and everything like that, just checking to make sure and saying, okay, why do we have three of the same thing here labeled? What does that mean? Okay. And then I tell people, if there's something on there that you can't figure out, you need to call your clinician and ask them to explain this to you, right? 
It could be one of two things that you just simply didn't recognize it and your clinician can explain the why. For example, the 599 code, that's a perfect example right there because it may show up as unspecified and you're sitting there going, what does this mean, right? Um, it could be that there may have been a billing mistake. Those happen frequently in healthcare where a secretary who perhaps does not have the right training or a clinician put the wrong bill in. <laughs> that happened to me on a couple of occasions, <laughs> right? So it's good for you to double check in these things. Yes? How many of you guys That's check funny. your insurance bills? Uh, you can check your insurance bill, yep. I do, yeah, and you're right. It's just doing your due diligence, I think. And we talk about it a lot, because it's like, you gotta be your own best advocate because nobody's gonna do it for you. Like, you have to be in charge of that. Nobody else is gonna look at that. Like, it only comes to you. So, I mean, I, I, I you didn't used to, in the beginning days of being an amputee, I was just like, oh, it was pages and pages of, <laughs> what do they call it? EOBs, explanation of benefits. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, I'm just overwhelmed with these things. Yeah. Again, bilateral AKBK on both legs. So I was getting a ton of those line items and not knowing what to do with them. But you're right. It's great to just look at it, understand it, and know what, what they're billing you for. Really. Yeah. No, and prosthetic componentry is expensive. I don't need to tell anybody else out there watching, you know, it's, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. So you want to make sure that you're getting what you, what you paid for. Definitely for sure. Um, so let's talk a little bit. I can't wait to hear what Brian has to say. Me too. So tell us a little bit about why is this L code? I mean, obviously now we have a specific L code. Wait, I didn't even make the official announcement. Did I make the official announcement? Revo Fit now has an official L code. You just did. I just did. <laughs> I think I put the real stuff in here, the real deep, the real caffeine in here. Should we share the number? Do we need to share the exact number here? I yes, please. Because I want people to write this down. So share the number. It's L5783. And um, I guess before I get too deep into it, every L code or every Hicks Picks level two code, which that is, comes with a description. And the description if I can get all the, the, the language right, is addition to, so it's a, it's additional to all base socket codes. So if you're a new socket or a replacement socket, so it's addition to lower extremity, user adjustable mechanical residual limb volume management system. And every single word in that description, um, I would say we intentionally architected to describe the use of the system, the benefits of the system, and the fact that it truly is a system that gets integrated into your prosthetic socket. So it's a, it's, it's quite a win and we're, we're pretty, pretty doggone excited about it. Mm -hmm. And guys, I typed it in there because if you have a post-it note, I want you to write it in your post-it note and stick it in your pocket because at some point, many of you are having conversations with your prosthetist as to whether or not you are a candidate for the RevoFit system. And this information takes time to trickle down. You have some prosthetists that they're really on it and they're reading all the news as it comes in. And some prosthetists, just because of the nature of the fact that they're very busy in their clinics, they may not have heard the news yet that there is a code. Uh, and I know some of you have come to me in the past and said, yeah, my prosthetist said my insurance wouldn't cover it. So we didn't get to do it, et cetera, et cetera. You can take this to your prosthetist now and say, here's the code. Let's talk. Right. So what is involved with getting an L code approved? It's, it's not a just a one checkbox application. Yeah. You know, the, the, the one of the most interesting things about answering that question is the first thing you have to do is decide if you want to go for it. And we spent years talking ourselves out of going for it because there's there's three things that happen. You you either get a code or you well you could go to the PDAC first, which is another acronym that you didn't mention. Okay. PDAC is a committee that decides whether or not a technology or a solution or a manufactured product fits into the existing code set. So that's their whole job is to figure out if we bring a new a new widget, a new foot, a new pylon, a new anything to the market. The first thing that usually happens is that committee, which is a contracted committee, understands that the deep, the deepest, darkest secrets of all the codes that are out there and all the descriptions and they decide it fits or doesn't fit. Well, so when they decide that it doesn't fit, then you have to go seek a new code. The, the perils of seeking a new code include you may not get one and then what? So then you're relegated. That's when the 5999 code or any any miscellaneous code becomes the place you go to die because basically they've said you're not worthy of being coded. Um, at least that's the way we looked at it. The second thing that could happen, you get your code, but you're not covered. 
Why in the world would they give you a code and not cover it? I don't know, but that is that is a pitfall. They could say it's a worthy product, but as a Medicare population, we don't see this ben benefiting Medicare, but they'll give it the credence of the fact that it wasn't part of an existing code and they'll say it's, it's worthwhile, but maybe they don't think that the Medicare population needs it because that's what CMS is mostly concerned with is covering mm -hmm. Medicare patients. The third thing that might happen is maybe you get the code, maybe you're covered, and then they set the allowable and it might be less than it costs you to bring the product to market. So if you if you take all those things, you look at the road ahead and you go, is it worth it? It is. That's a daunting task. It's, and so we talked ourselves out of it for years, Kosi and group. And it was um, and finally we said one day, you know what? We got to go for it. We don't do anything by the rules at Click Medical. We're we're an innovator. We think if something needs to be done, we're going to go figure out how to do it. And we went for it and we got we got great counsel from good friends in the industry. I've seen a couple of names here on the chat of folks that helped us tell the stories that they see as clinicians that they have delivered for great patient outcomes. And, and you go for it. And then the process is it takes a lot of time to write the application, provide the evidence, prove that you're a market worthy product. And you go through that that gauntlet and then it takes another four to six months to find out if if anybody has college kids, it's like the FAFSA. You yes. the FAFSA for your kids going to college and you have no idea what black hole it went yeah. into. Mm -hmm. And you find out later that you missed a field and you're like. <laughs> um, and so you go through that process. You find out that there's a preliminary decision. You go through another process. There's a final decision and then time elapses. And then and then voila, April 1st, 2024, L5783 was born. Wow. And more things have to happen after that. We won't go into all that detail, but now they have to define it further with policy um, for Medicare and for all the different jurisdictions of Medicare. And then and then the dominoes will fall, what the VA will do, what the Medicare Advantage plans will do, what the commercial plans will do. And then, you know, workers comp tends to be workers comp, but they could, you know, they could do some things too. So it's a it's every day is a new thing to learn. I, I'm learning so much every day. And what you said earlier about finding an expert in coding, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> you will find people with expertise that we don't have here, but to know the whole system. It's like, I don't know. I think it's not possible. No, no. And, and I yeah. There, there's so much even just in the simple explanation that I gave that I missed right there. So, so you mentioned earlier about the importance of the 5999 code, that it's not always necessarily the enemy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the intention, I think the intention of that code is a really good one, which is if we can't find a place for you, then we'll give you an opportunity to document the, the indications that sort of, um, justify medical necessity of something new that's not otherwise coded. And we did that for years. We didn't have, PDAC never said, I, I'm sorry for the, the acronym. I said it earlier. We're just going to have to go with it. But the, yeah. those folks never said click medical RevoFit is not part of the code set. We just decided to say, you know what? We know we're not part of it. So the L5999 for lower extremity or L7499 for upper extremity mm -hmm. is the way to go. And, and, and many of you out there who are practitioners, if you ever build a, a RevoFit system on the L5999 or 7499 code, thank you. Because in doing so, you fought it. You probably held your cash up for north of 90 days. I'm guessing closer to six plus months. And if you, if you got it through Medicare and got paid, you put precedent in the system that allowed us to go have them see history when we asked for them to recognize not only the value of the product, but the value of reimbursement to the practitioner. And it worked. If there's no history of reimbursement, they don't have near as many data points to look at. And then you're really in danger of getting that really, really crummy um, allowable. So yeah. that that's a good. So and it's hard because all the you could get denied. It, it denies the whole claim. Yeah. You're 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 held up. It takes time and energy to go fight it. But for, for, for those of us on this side of the fence as innovators, the new technology can't get to market without everybody kind of pushing it through, pulling in the same direction, you know, and man, we had, we had such incredible support. Everybody was like, what can we do? Testimonials, photos. Um, we, we would get people to send us information that, that seemed to work when they would code with the 99 code. So mm -hmm. it, allowed us, it allowed us to tune our language to say, you know, 
the doctor notes need to indicate for things that volume management solves for, which Lou, you're the one that can talk about that way better than I could, right? Like, why would you need that for to go about your day in a way that's um, that's better than otherwise? Absolutely. I've been blessed with some really great people in my life that have helped me along the way with understanding the terminology for one, because the terminology is like once you understand the language, you can kind of know how to navigate the system. But I talk about it a lot. It's it's learning how to navigate the healthcare system. And for me, I've been doing it for 17 years now. So I'm kind of a veteran at it. But for those that don't really know the terminology, you know, or how to do it, because I think that most importantly, you have to justify why you're even wanting this device. And for me, it was like, well, my practitioner works in Los Angeles and I live in Santa Barbara. That's three hours away, one way. So for me to go make a micro adjustment, you know, that takes about 20 minutes to do, like that doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do that day trip. And that's where I found a lot of my life just being so much easier, not to mention less skin breakdown, less redness and tenderness of my limb. So the overall health improved with the adjustability. But I can give you a perfect example that I often share with people. You know, I was doing a lot of travel. And so if anybody that's an amputee is flying a lot, they understand that up in the air, that leg will start to swell just like your feet will. And for me, you know, I was often going to Florida because you know, I was traveling from here. And so two and a half hours mm -hmm. into that four hour segment to Dallas, yeah. really, um, my leg was pounding inside of there. Now, get this. So before I had these rigid sockets, right, that I would literally have to take off my prosthetic limb. I'm on the plane now I'm like, sitting next mm -hmm. to people I don't know. And I'm having to like say, sorry, like I'm gonna put my leg here, do you mind? Mm -hmm. In addition, like it was hard for me to get that socket back on once it was time for me to lead the plane. And so mm -hmm. what I ended up doing was like, okay, I always want the right seat of the plane so that I could put my prosthetic up against the window there. And, and then I would just kind of, you know, shed these layers of socks off. Well. Once I had adjustability, all I had to do was reach down, turn that dial. That actually bought me like two extra hours of flight time. And then when it was time to go, I would literally tighten that dial up, stand up and go. Like it was a game changer just for my travel alone. But, you know, these are just little things that I had to kind of discover um, in my daily life to see the true benefits of adjustability. Yep. No. And Debbie says, my pros Lou, my process is three and a half hours each way. I travel internationally every month. Travel is rough. And you had me at click. <laughs> <The telling. laughs> you a new fan right there. I've been um, down that road and know what it's like. Yes. No. And, and for me, it's also just, just the simple things of you don't have to take your pant leg off. You can adjust it through the pant leg. Um, but it's not so high profile. Like I love the new with the new click reel, it's like a lower profile, so it doesn't stick out so much, but you can still adjust it through the pant leg. So I don't know, small things like that. Um, Beth had a great question. She said, would a person who does not have volume issues benefit from a Revo? You want to take that one, Lou? Or Brian? Go ahead. Bro. Oh, yeah. You want me to answer? Go for it, and I'll chime in. Would a person, stay, state it again, would a person without limb volume fluctuation Issue. Mm -hmm. issues? Yes, 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 yes. And I go back to skin breakdown, redness, irritation, the limb, like in being in that. Uh, so it, before it, with the rigid socket, like your limb would move around in there. Um, just having that tightness will keep you secu secure. I still wear a sock ply. Don't get me wrong. Like I still wear a three ply, but I'm not changing them out throughout the day anymore. And plus I'm not having to put them in my pocket either. You know, like who wants to carry around sock plies with them? Like I don't. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I think, yes, I would say yes to that answer. You could still get a lot of benefits from it. Number one being the skin breakdown and redness and irritation. Like that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. And the other one that's, that comes to mind for me is, um, you know, the residual limb shape can be um, somewhat bulbous at the distal end and, or at, yeah, at the distal end. And what could happen is in order to get that socket easily donned, safely donned, Sometimes just opening the socket up can allow you to safe, you know, safely and effectively down the socket and then close either the panel or close the hinge door 
um, or even maybe it's a gap, kind of an opening. And there's lots of socket designs that, that, that allow for that. And it's a huge deal. And then it sort of serves as more of an anatomical, anatomical suspension than as a volume management system. But because of the shape and because of the, the volume change as you, as you move up and down the limb, it's a great solution for that. Yeah. Yep. I was just going to say that the bulbous end. And then also a couple, one, a couple of viewers have told me that it's just in the morning when they have trouble getting into their socket because mm -hmm. their limb is puffy and they don't have to do the dance it's true. Jump in their socket. True. So they can just go in and then throughout the day, just adjust it, just those little adjustments. Yep. Um, so Lou, you were going to say something? I was going to say something. I just lost train of thought. Um, so <laughs> that's how that's how fast it goes when you're my age. Um, so we were talking about the the benefits of uh, adjustability and fluctuation. Come back to me. I'll I'll, I'll have it. I so. will. I'll, we'll take Emily's question while you keep while you get that train of thought back. Uh, Emily yes. says, "How much weight does adjustability add to the socket?" So I can show you. It's like Seventy something grams, right, Brian? Yeah. This much. It's it's actually not a lot. It's something it's like 70, 72 or 74 grams. Uh, right. Not to the point where you could feel it, really. I don't feel it. And I, I do want to clarify, because there's always a little bit of confusion with this when, when people are first learning about the RevoFit. The RevoFit is a kit, right? So it literally comes in a box and all of the pieces that your prosthetist needs to build the adjustability into your socket is in the box. So it's the, the cording. I don't even know what the official name is. I always call it the cord. Place. Yep. And then the whether it's the boa dial or the click reel, the click reel is what we're using nowadays, right? So your prosthetist is still the one making the socket. They are still the ones in control of making that socket soup to nuts. They're using the items in this kit to build the adjustability in. Does that make sense, guys? So I always like to clarify that because people sometimes think um, that the socket is made by Click Medical, the full socket itself, and it's not. Um, which in my opinion is kind of a good thing because it means that your prosthetist who knows your limb the best, they're the ones who are making your socket and they're putting the adjustability in right there at their clinic. Because yeah, I'll add one thing for the, for the, um, for added weight, it, it, the socket designs can impact that, right? So when the, the tubing that the Revo fit system utilizes for the lace to travel through, oftentimes it's, it's sandwiched between the two different walls. So it's a, it's called a double lamination for you prosthetists and technicians. You know that maybe the rest of us folks that don't make these sockets don't always know that but extra material can add some weight, but if weight is an issue there, there are techniques that you can reduce the amount of material in those laminations and you can do a single, they call it a single shot lamination. And there are also techniques where the lace tubing itself, actually improves the structure of the socket frame such that other other materials can be reduced so you get increased strength because of the tubing itself and i'm getting away I'm, I'm getting a little bit no i like it. I know this part. but i you know you know joe i've heard joe talk about this many times you actually can use the the um the layups to increase strength reduce materials so you're you're kind of trading weight for weight it can add a little bit, but I would say that's not a problem we hear about. I did see another question about, you know, how far the dial sticks up off the socket frame and does that cause <laughs> confuse? I mean, it, it, you can't hide it. It does stick up off the socket frame, but there are ways you can essentially strategically place it. So it's either not in the way uh, you can mount it where the, where the distal end of the socket begins to curve. You put it in a place that's easy to get to that doesn't interfere with motorcycle riding or bicycle riding or whatever. And these are all the decisions the prosthetist needs to make when working with the patient on what do you want to accomplish once you're in your, in your prosthesis, what do you do? What does your life look like? What does your work look like? And while it sticks up a little bit off the frame, it is um, the value exceeds the inconvenience of having kind of a little bit extra, you know, a little bit of extra contour there. That's what we hear most of the time. And there we go. So Jamie posted that weight there as well. The real weight is 71 grams. Um, Beth is asking, does it matter whether or not it's a suction or pin suspension, referring to the suspension? Um, and I do want to add something, guys. I always say like sometimes some of the components you use, if they have a little bit of extra weight, if the socket is built well and there is good suspension and it's well connected to your leg, then 71 grams is not going to be something you're going to notice. Um, so going back to the best question, does it matter whether or not it's suction or pin suspension? No, compatible with either. 
-hmm. So it's compatible with all the different suspension systems. And then let's see. Let me just show you guys my, mine real quick because mine has the both. It has a vacuum, it has a vacuum and has the, the hinge design, which would come back here. So I don't I have, have that one, Lou. So can you show them how that hinges out? Because that's the one I yeah. don't have. So this just, I'm just going to uh, release it a little bit and I'm just going to push out so it can come out. So this is what it looks like right there. I mean, it can go further than that, but I mean, that's about as far as like I like it to go. And, you know, what it's got is, so I have a flexible inner, you could see that. And then I have the hinge, and then I also have uh, suction here. So it's kind of got like the best of all worlds here. Mm -hmm. And and on top of that, so I use the, the liners that have the ring, the adjustable ring. But this works great for what I'm doing. I'm not trying to like run any marathons or anything crazy. I'm just walking around, walking well, <laughs> you know, cozy, right? Because that's really yes. the number one thing, walking well and uh, and living my life. And it fits me. So um, I'm happy. Very good. Uh, Scott asks a very good question. He says, is the weight limit still low? Well, low to me. I'm over 500 pounds. So lots of options are not available. Mm -hmm. um, and Jamie thankfully jumped in and said, yes, that basically talking to your prosthetist about possibly using two reels. Uh, to increase the weight limit for adjustability. That's right. So that seems to be a good a good solution there. Harsh mm -hmm. asks, is it better for an AK or a BK? The adjustability? Oh, good question. I I've never had that question choice. before. I'm like, yeah. well, the, the, there's, there's many, many designs for both AK and BK. And I would say um, the volume volume management is volume management. And so you'll see designs for um, you'll oftentimes you'll see a gap sort of a design for the, where the posterior aspect of the socket is open for yeah, bingo for, for seated comfort and whatnot. Yep. And rather than have a sort of a Dacron strap or something fixed on there, why not have a little bit of adjustability so that if you're seated for a while, you can actually loosen the socket. Um, we do see a lot of, um, you know, we see a lot of sort of fleshy AK type systems where there's really a lot of volume to manage as, as opposed to a BK, which is a, a sort of a smaller part of the anatomy. So that's, I, I think I'm going to say it's 50, 50, it's equally effective. It really just depends on the sort of the patient needs their their anatomical um, indications and weaknesses and sensitivities. And it's, it's an effective system for both. Yep. Absolutely. And let's see what we got. Sorry, guys, I'm scrolling through all the questions here. By the way, guys, if for whatever reason I miss your question or you think of a question after we stop going live, you can email me your questions directly at Kosi at CosiTalks.com. And if it's a question I don't know the answer to, then I'm going to go talk to the experts and get the answer from them. Uh, let's see. Did we get all the questions? We did pretty good. All right, guys, time for our last giveaway of the evening. Jamie is going to post another link. And the question, once she posts that link, is what is the L code for the RevoFit system? So she's going to post a link. There it is. Awesome. So go to that website. Go to the Click Medical website. Show my sponsors a little bit of love there. And let us know what is the L code for the RevoFit system. Drum roll. Okay. Good funny, luck. funny story while you're drum rolling. So yes. we, were, we knew we were getting a new code, but we didn't know what the actual number was. And I'm not mm -hmm. going to spoil it by telling it to you right this moment. But so before the show, we decided, well, we don't know the actual code. So we just called it the Revo code. <laughs> <laughs> and, Jamie, yep. and Jamie got us a neon sign that said Revo code. And mm -hmm. the doggone thing was so bright. You had to wear sunglasses to look at it. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. There we go. We got Scott coming in, Pam coming in. And I realized I forgot to, <laughs> Jamie says Revo code. <laughs> Revo code. That's right. He's putting that in there. Yeah. Wishful thinking. And you know what? Using the law of attraction too. We know what we wanted. That's right. All right. We're getting a few people chiming in with the answers. Who's going to get the third Yeti mug? I got the old, I got the OG one. I love that one too. It's a great one. Yeah. All right. I have the travel one. It folds up and you can just put it in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's the koozie one. 
the cuisine. Nice. All right, guys. Carrie says, just tuning in. We'll check this out on the replay. Thank you, Cozy. Oh, Carrie, I can't. You are definitely going to want to check this replay out. And guys, just as a reminder, I have my new blog and my new podcast. And yes, that is absolutely a shameless plug. Uh, you can find it on my Cozy Talks website right there. So I'm putting everything on my website. So it's one place that you can go to to find it. We're going to be uploading this show onto my podcast on Friday. And then guys, here's, here's where I really want you to keep this in mind. Monday, I will be releasing the blog about cracking the insurance code, everything that we talked about tonight. So you can read it with your morning coffee and then my cheat sheet, which this is the cheat sheet this is what I've been using all night right here. No shame, no shame. All the initials, all that kind of fun stuff. So that if you have, when you keep this on your fridge and you get your next insurance bill, you can refer to this, okay? Because I'll put the <clears throat> website on here as to where you can look up all the codes, right? Uh, let's see. Oh, Beth says she lost her feed for a few minutes. Can Revo be used for both suction and pinlock? Yes, yes, it can, Beth. Yes. yes. Um, so Van Gregory asks, not that I am an upper extremity amputee. You may have addressed this already. Um, but is there an adjustable kit for upper extremities? Yeah, great question. Um, Revo fit gets used in upper extremity quite a lot as does Revo Lock as a suspension system. They're, they're both compatible. You know, the, for, for a smaller upper extremity socket, you know, the curves are much more severe for, a, for an arm than a leg typically. So there, there tends to be some, some creative, you know, deciding of how to get the dial in a place where it's most effective, but absolutely we see a lot of it. We even see some of the lower powered dials, some of the lasers and whatnot get used in upper extremity and upper extremity sockets as well. So yeah, we have great resources on our website, Click Academy. There are advanced advanced design um, case studies that have some upper extremity designs and we can always answer questions if you have more specific questions, but for sure. And we're so confident in that that we're working right now with a group of experts in the industry to begin our application process for an upper extremity code for RevoFit. So stay tuned. Oh, nice. Very yeah. nice. In the, the back. <laughs> nice. So guys, I've got also the names of our two winners, our last two winners. So for the, the previous giveaway that we did, we've got Pam Nunziato. Congratulations, Pam. And then for this one, the one who got the L code is Barbara Wood. So uh, folks, thank you so much for being uh, participating in these giveaways. I will try to hunt you down afterwards. But if you can, if you can, if you can jump the gun on that one for me and send me your addresses to this email address and click medical will be sending you your yeti mugs all right guys i think we grabbed all the questions this was really good i learned a lot this evening mm -hmm. so um thank you both um for being on the show for your time and for your expertise uh with everything with insurance so brian i'm sending um all the insurance questions from now on to you. <laughs> so, so let me just tell you and tell everyone, and if you want to add this to your to your cheat sheet, it might be good. On our website, the, underneath the RevoFit product page, so it's it's www.clickmedical.co yep. forward slash RevoFit, we have a section on insurance and coding. And um, I worked on all of it, and I am not, like I said, an expert, nor am I, a, nor am I a, um, an insurance coder. But so it's in it's in layman's terms. It's really good materials. It's great for prosthetists. It could some of it could be very good for for uh, amputees that want to understand the frequently asked questions of of the code itself. A lot of it's 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 certainly specific to Revo Fit, but there's good nuggets in there just to understand you know what has to be done to get your your uh, the parts of your prosthesis paid for. No, it's it's already. I was scribbling away as you were saying it, so I will be putting that on my cheat sheet for sure. <laughs> thank you, um, and I do want to say a special thank you to Jamie. She is my gal behind the scenes uh, from Click Medical. She is the one posting everything and running back and forth and getting everything uh, squared away. So thank you, Jamie, for all your help and to the Click Medical team for the continued support for the Cozy Talk Show. Um, so guys. Please share this uh, show out to your support groups. I really rely upon your generosity to do that, to help spread the word about the show. Go listen to the podcast. It's always, like I said, repetition is the mother of memory. Sometimes it's good to hear this information a couple of times and then go read the blog. So I think I did all my plugging. I did it all. I think we got everything covered right there. All right, guys, as always, thank you for letting us be a part of your lives this evening. And we will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. 
God bless, guys. All right. Bye, guys.